So this hopefully brief video will be about a repair of this kind of product. This is a SVINS SDC008. It's a alarm clock or certainly a clock calendar that's uh, optimized for people with bad eyesight uh, and also to assist uh, more elderly people or people with some dementia um, because it spells certain things out that some people in that position um, have difficulties with. And uh, it's a really good product. I would say my only complaint about it is that it's not synchronized to anything. It's just crystal oscillator based like a digital watch. So its time does drift somewhat and you need to periodically update the time to keep it accurate. It would be nice if it synced to the GPS signal or something, but it doesn't. But here's another product of the same exact kind. The image is upside down and backwards. And uh, unfortunately, it seems that this is a common fault of this product. Maybe it's only a small minority, but there are plenty of reports that a quick Google search found, including Amazon reviews, saying that this has happened to many people. And um, I've reasoned it out and figured that probably there's a circuit board in here that has the basic functionality handling the clock and the setting controls. And then there's probably a off-the-shelf LCD module with its own LCD display controller and that the the main circuit board sends probably serial data to the display controller but along with that's probably some additional information that uh, dictates which side of the display should be up and is the image left to right or right to left and top to bottom bottom to top that type of thing that's just a guess but I'm suspecting if I open this up I'm going to find that it has a connector cable of some sort between the two circuit boards and that they're, the whole problem here may be just a bad connection. Uh, so I'm going to pop this open, or try to anyway, and see if I can remedy it by that expedient. Okay, so I've removed the power cord. It appears that there are four Phillips head screws, one of them under a quality control label. I don't see any other screws that need to come out. And by the way, this is a uh, number zero Phillips head screwdriver. It seems to be a good size for these screws. This isn't in my house, this is in a relative's house, and their cat is driving me nuts. I think it wants some goodies or something. Okay, so I'm going to have to use both hands to get this case apart. Okay, that popped off fairly easily. There are little um, tabs like this two per side and uh, the trick is to just stick a small flat blade screwdriver in there and kind of feel for where they are and then push down and that uh, results in them popping loose. So now I have to lift the um, LCD out of there. Okay, so the LCD was just held down by um, one, two 
adhesive pads and then it's sitting on the same kind of pads but with their protective paper so it sits on those like a cushion and then two of them with the adhesive exposed are what was holding the LCD in place and here's the main circuit board here's a piece of black electrical tape which I'm just peeling off and here's the little connector um, and um, it's not apparent to me that there's any release mechanism on this so it might just be let's see I'll have to study that up close the trick to getting this uh, cable out of there is this little black piece it actually flips up on a hinge like this and after messing around with these tabs on the end thinking that's what was holding it it actually came down to just flipping this piece up and then that releases the cable the top side of it's just blue insulation the bottom side had the bottom side has all these tiny connectors on it so I'm going to go get some uh, isopropyl alcohol and a wipe. I'm just going to clean that off. Okay, just a little bit of rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol on a piece of paper towel and just wipe that off firmly uh, in the direction of the cable so that it doesn't leave little pieces of fiber um, on the connector. And then I have to use both hands on this to get this back. Okay, I was um, able to get it in there by grabbing it with my needle nose pliers. It would have been good to have two pliers grab at each end or each edge and just push it in until it doesn't go any further. And make sure it's straight and then push that little black lever down and it should hold it in place. So now, I'm going to lay the LCD back and I made sure I pushed it down on those adhesive pads so it's mostly holding it in place. So before I'm buttoning, buttoning it back up, I'm going to plug it in and see if that made any improvement. Well, the display seems to be right side up. And it's working. That did the trick. Okay, now I can remove the power supply again and button up the case. The trick here is when you find these tabs, you have to push down on that side and kind of lift on the other side and then those snap into place okay okay I'm gonna unfurl the kickstand once again set this back up and hopefully I didn't booger something up in the course of putting the case back together. So far it looks good. And it is good. So I hope that helps other people to fix these otherwise good products when they uh, have this kind of failure.